Dad, what are you doing here? I shouted because there he was, lying in an old, worn-out tent in the yard under the blazing sun. It reminded me of the tents from my childhood. Ah, don't worry about it. It's the usual thing, Dad replied weakly, leaving me speechless. Since he hurt his leg, he's been living with my brother and his wife. Whenever I called, my brother said Dad was fine, and his wife would laugh and say she was taking good care of him. They told me I couldn't talk to Dad because he wasn't good with technology and had made new friends at the hospital, so he was enjoying life. But seeing Dad lying there looking so weak, I realized my brother and his wife were lying. Dad slowly raised his hand and pointed toward a direction. I saw my home. I'm single and my parents' house is in the city, but I moved to the countryside to work at a resort hotel, chasing my dream. My parents had a car accident two years ago. Only Mom died, but Dad injured his leg and got really depressed after losing her. They were always together and known as a loving couple in the neighborhood. Dad liked staying home, but he would travel because Mom loved it. On the way back from one of their trips, they had the accident, and only Dad survived. Why did I survive instead of her? Dad would say, feeling guilty every day. His injury made him stay indoors even more. Since I was working, I couldn't take care of him as much as I wanted. Seeing him so sad made me feel terrible, but luckily, I have a brother who is seven years older than me. My brother Anthony and his wife, Mia, live close to our parents' home and would check on us sometimes. Dad's gotten a lot weaker, hasn't he? I said. They were a loving couple after all. It's understandable. We live nearby, so Emma, don't worry and focus on your work, Anthony replied. Thank you, I said, feeling grateful. Lately, I've been affected by the recession and my income has dropped a lot. I need to start saving soon. How about you, Emma? Anthony asked with a sigh. I'm actually doing pretty well. Thanks to tourists coming back, I've been really busy lately. Unlike my brother, the overtime pay has helped a lot, so I haven't been struggling financially. In fact, I've had a raise and think I'm earning more than most of my peers. However, not having private time has been tough. This was the first time my brother had talked about his financial situation. He said they've had to cut back on food expenses and are barely getting by each day. He hasn't bought clothes in over a year, and they haven't gone on any trips either. They wanted children, but with their current situation it's not possible. I was worried they were really struggling. Then, during a conversation at his house, Anthony mentioned, Dad's life has gotten much worse, and he needs more support. We're thinking about living together so we can take care of him. Mia added, We were thinking it would save us money, and we could take care of Dad at the same time. I appreciate it. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help, I said gratefully. Thank you, Emma. Good luck with your work, Maya replied warmly. So to save money and look after Dad, my brother and his wife decided to move in with him. Dad and my brother didn't have the best relationship to start with. When Anthony was a student, he used to come home late, and Dad would often scold him. Over time, they drifted apart, and after Anthony finished college, he rarely visited. I hadn't seen them talk much since Anthony became an adult, so it was surprising that he was now positive about living with Dad. It seemed clear they were facing financial difficulties. The idea of saving on rent and living costs made sense, especially since I, living alone, understood the appeal. But I couldn't help feeling anxious about whether they would truly take good care of Dad, especially since I couldn't visit home often due to work. I regularly called Anthony instead. Hey Anthony, how's Dad doing? He's been smiling more these days. I feel bad leaving all the caregiving to you. It must be tough. It's been three months now, and we've adjusted to living together. At first, I was worried, but it seemed my brother and his wife were committed to taking care of Dad, so I could focus on my work without worries. Several years passed, and after summer vacation ended, I decided to visit my hometown for the first time in a while. I called Anthony beforehand to let them know I was coming. Hey Anthony, it's been a while. Oh, it has been. How are you? Think you'll be able to come home this year? Anthony asked cheerfully. Yeah, things have settled down at work, so I'm planning to come home for a few days, I replied. That's great to hear. Travel safely, he said. Thanks. Please let Dad and Mia know I'm coming, I said before hanging up. I tried calling Dad too, but couldn't reach him. I let Anthony know and finally headed home for the first time in years. It was the longest I had been away since Mom passed away. I used to worry about Dad and trying to visit during holidays, but I hadn't been able to in a long time. Knowing Anthony and Mia were there gave me some comfort. The city home felt much hotter than where I lived, as I arrived, sweating from the heat, I noticed an unfamiliar old tent in the front yard. Was there really a tent? I wondered aloud, puzzled by its presence. Curious yet apprehensive, I approached it and sensed someone inside. Hurriedly, I made my way in the family home. I'm back, I announced. Welcome back, Emma. You look pale. What's wrong? Mia exclaimed, noticing my expression. 
I think there's someone in the tent, I blurted out hastily to Mia, who had just welcomed me home. Her response caught me off guard. Oh, that's Dad, Maya replied calmly. What? Dad is in that tent on such a hot day, I exclaimed, rushing to check inside. There I found Dad lying down, looking like he had collapsed. Mia, I'm calling an ambulance. Dad seems exhausted, I said urgently. No need to call an ambulance, Mia insisted firmly. It's Dad's choice to live in the garden. There's nothing to worry about, she added, sounding resolute. Dad looked fatigued on such a hot day, yet he wants to live in the garden. The man who preferred being indoors even when Mom was healthy. Dad always said the best place in summer was a cool room and a warm one in winter. It didn't make sense for him to want to be outside in this heat. Something felt wrong. An uneasy feeling crept over me. I hurried to the tent where Dad was and spoke to him directly. Dad, what happened? Are you okay? I asked with concern. Emma, it's nothing. Just the usual. I'm fine, Dad replied weakly. Do you stay out here in this heat every day? Why don't you come inside? When I pressed him, Dad pointed slowly towards the main house. That used to be my room. Since I moved in with Anthony and Mia, I've been staying in a closet, Dad revealed, shocking me. In a closet? I thought they were taking good care of you, I said, feeling bewildered and concerned. Not once have they taken care of me properly. Their decision to live together was solely for their own savings, Dad revealed bitterly. I've told them countless times how much I hate staying in the closet because of my leg, Dad continued. Their response was to tell me if I didn't like it, I should live outside. That's why they'd left me out here in the garden with this old tent during this sweltering heat. Dad's words were a painful narrative I wished I could block out. It was now clear that there was discord between my brother and Dad. I blamed myself for trusting Anthony. Mia, too, was not the nurturing type I had hoped for. I recalled how Anthony used to complain about her frequent nights out drinking until the early hours. This couple, who boasted about dining out every single day and never cooking at home, were clearly ill-suited to taking care of Dad. Yet foolishly, I had expected more from them. This is unacceptable. I'm here now, and I've got you, I declared firmly. It was shocking to uncover how badly they had treated Dad. Despite their assurances of good care over the phone, they had confined him to a closet and then banished him to the yard. Anger surged through me, unforgiving and intense. Ignoring Mia's protests, I dialed for an ambulance. There's no me for that. Please, don't make a scene. My brother's wife pleaded desperately, but I paid no heed. When the ambulance arrived, they took Dad to the hospital, and I accompanied him. Dad was on the brink of heat stroke, but thankfully it wasn't life-threatening. However, due to neglect in providing proper meals and maintaining hygiene, he needed hospitalization. Dad, rest now. Take your time to recover, I reassured him as he settled in. Then he replied, Emma, you're my lifesaver. I was ready to join your mom every day. He looked relieved. What are you saying? We need you here with us for much longer. Realizing Dad had been living each day as if it were his last, tears welled up in my eyes, but I kept a smile on my face for him. I returned to the family home to gather some things for Dad's hospital stay. Anthony, Mia, you need to explain yourselves about Dad. I confronted my brother and his wife, seething with anger about how Dad had been treated. We were just trying to push him away, hoping he'd leave on his own, Mia confessed casually. Yeah, surprisingly he was stubborn and wouldn't leave, Anthony said casually, almost as if it were a joke. It was clear they knew they had treated Dad cruelly. They chuckled as they recounted their attempts to push him away. Are you even hearing yourselves? Dad's life is at stake here. If anything had happened to him, you could have been held responsible, I exclaimed, unable to contain my disbelief and anger. You're exaggerating. We did give him food and checked on him once a day, Anthony replied dismissively, as if Dad was just some animal they were dealing with. He's in the hospital now because he wasn't properly cared for. Do you understand what you've done? It's outrageous to kick him out of his own home, I retorted, frustration evident in my voice. My brother and his wife showed no remorse and started making excuses for their actions. We didn't choose to live here. Financial struggles forced us to move in, but caregiving turned out to be much harder than we expected, Mia explained. That's why we considered placing him in a facility, but Dad strongly opposed leaving this house full of memories of Mom. He even tried to kick us out. They pleaded to me, casting themselves as victims. They struggled with caregiving and attempted to convince Dad to leave, but instead, they found themselves on the brink of being forced out. Having rent-free accommodation is crucial for us, so we couldn't let Dad kick us out, Anthony justified their actions. I never imagined my brother would stoop so low as to deliberately worsen Dad's care and quality of life just to secure the house for himself. Despite Dad and my brother not being close, I had trusted that as an adult in his mid-thirties, he would manage Dad's care responsibly. It was terrifying to realize they had devised such a cruel strategy.
Moreover, my brother confessed that by confining Dad to the closet or forcing him into the yard when I visited, they were trying to manipulate Dad into choosing to live with me instead. Living in the countryside is better for his health anyway, so we were planning to send him to live with you, my brother admitted. We thought he'd leave on his own before you got here, but he held on, Mia chuckled, as if reminiscing about a challenging game. Now that you're back, Dad will probably say he wants to live with you, Anthony laughed, casually dropping this bombshell. Then he said something outrageous. Now that Dad's in the hospital, this house belongs to us, so pack your things and leave. I was so appalled by his audacity that I was at a loss for words, to think he could say such a thing while living in someone else's house. I gathered Dad's belongings and went back to the hospital. Dad, I heard about what happened from Anthony. It must have been tough, I said gently. Dad sighed, expressing his despair. Trying to drive them out of the house backfired on me. That house is a treasure filled with memories of your mom. I couldn't just hand it over to people like them. His enduring love for mom still gave him strength, which was reassuring. Don't worry, Dad. We'll figure this out together. You're not alone in this, I reassured him, determined to make things right for him. Don't worry about the house. We'll figure something out. You might need to stay in the hospital for a bit longer, but would you like to live with me after you're discharged? I suggested. Dad's face lit up with relief. Thank you. If you're okay with it, I'd be happy to live together. After Dad agreed to live with me, I returned to my place. Two months later, I started receiving a barrage of calls from Anthony. There are a bunch of unknown men in the house. What's going on? Anthony demanded furiously. Without replying, I handed the phone to someone else. The person who took over was our maternal grandfather. Hey, Anthony. I've heard the story from Emma. You've done something terrible to my dear son-in-law. When grandfather spoke, Anthony sounded shocked. Our family home was actually built by grandfather as a wedding gift for mom when she was young. Dad, who was adopted into the family, was always treated by grandfather as if he were his own son. When I told grandfather about the situation, he was furious and sent over some of his strongest apprentices to drive out my brother and his wife. After the commotion, I called grandfather, who owns the land and the house. Grandfather has always been imposing, and Anthony has always been afraid of him. I believed he could help us out of this mess. Anthony, all your stuff has been arranged to be sent to Mia's parents' house, Grandfather said firmly. Don't just go ahead with things on your own, Anthony protested, though his voice was tinged with fear. You're the one who acted out of line. Now deal with the consequences, Grandfather retorted sharply. A person who treated their family like that has no right to argue. Do you have any complaints? Grandfather said firmly. No, sir. I'm sorry, Anthony replied and didn't argue back. After that, Grandfather was always kind to me but very strict with Anthony as he grew up. If Anthony cried, Grandfather would spank him, which made him cry more and get scolded even more. What was okay in the past is now considered wrong. Watching Anthony, I often felt glad to be a girl. Even though Anthony would rebel against Dad, he never dared to go against Grandfather. This time, too, he tried to resist a little, but Grandfather quickly took control, showing that my brother couldn't match him. Anthony and Mia's belongings were sent to Mia's parents' house as Grandfather had arranged. When they arrived, it was clear they hadn't been there in a long time. Hey Dad, I think our stuff has arrived, so we came to pick it up, Mia said. Mia's dad came out from the back room. I've heard everything from Anthony's sister. You two are going to live with us from now on. It's okay, we'll live at my family home, Mia replied. Don't even think about coming back after treating your father like that. I'll fix your bad attitude, Mia's dad said angrily. I had heard that Mia's dad was very strict. After explaining everything to him, Anthony and Mia had no choice but to live under his strict rules. Mia learned to cook from scratch and had to prepare meals for the family every day. Anthony got permission for a side job and helped Mia's dad with his work on weekends. After dad was discharged from the hospital, grandfather told him the house needed repairs because of some damage. Determined to fix the house filled with memories of mom, dad committed himself to rehabilitation and recovered impressively. You did great with the rehab. The doctors were even surprised by how quickly you recovered, I said. Of course, it's the house filled with memories of your mom, so I need to put my all into fixing it. Dad replied with a brightness in his voice like in the old days. It seemed his love for mom helped dad recover. With grandfather's instructions and the help of his apprentices, we gradually repaired the house. While fixing the house, dad seemed to regain the sparkle he had when mom was alive. You seem really lively, I said. Working on the house brings back a lot of memories, and it feels like I'm talking to your mom. I felt like she had gone far away, but maybe she's been nearby all along, watching over me. Hearing Dad talk like that almost brought tears to my eyes. Despite the horrible treatment from my brother and his wife, maybe Mom really was protecting him. Eventually, the house repairs were completed. When the repairs were done, Dad decided to let go of the house. 
Dad, are you sure? I felt like Mom said it's okay not to cling to this house anymore. Plus, now that it's so beautifully done, I really want someone to live in it, he spoke calmly. I see. I think she would be happy too. Thanks to the renovations Dad and the team made, a buyer was quickly found. Because of all this, Dad and Grandfather decided to move into nursing homes. I've started visiting more often. Dad, how are you? I'm having a great time every day. Made a lot of friends too. It's all thanks to you, Emma. Really, thank you. Dad said with a smile. Dad seemed to be enjoying his days with the other residents, making the time I spent with him even more precious. I've been living more peacefully every day. As for Anthony and Mia, we've gotten used to Dad's discipline, and it's quite comfortable this way, Mia said. Yeah, he's not strict all the time, and the house is big. It's great, Anthony added, seeming to enjoy their lifestyle too. Being relieved from caregiving, we're actually lucky, Mia said happily. Thanks to this, we're living a good life despite our low income, I feel so grateful. My brother and his wife had adjusted to living at Mia's parents' house and were happy to be free from caregiving responsibilities, showing no signs of regret. But then Mia's dad, furious at their lack of remorse, kicked them out. There's no remorse from you, so you might as well leave, Mia's dad said quietly yet angrily. Pack your things and leave immediately, he expelled them without allowing any discussion. Accustomed to living at home without saving money, they found themselves homeless and desperate. Until they could afford the initial costs for a new place, they lived in an old tent in the park during winter. It's freezing. We're in this situation because your income is so low, Mia blamed Anthony. The tent is from home, but I bought you a new sleeping bag, so stop complaining. I've been working seven days a week without a break, Anthony retorted irritably. With the money from his side job already spent, they had nothing left. How about we contact Emma and ask if we can live with her in the countryside? Anthony suggested without much concern. Soon after, Anthony called to inform me they had been kicked out of Mia's parents' house and were now sleeping in a cold park. My brother, who had previously made fun of my rural lifestyle, was now pleading to live with me. Knowing how badly he treated our father, I couldn't bring myself to help him, so I refused. I decided to block all future communications to avoid any further trouble. I can only hope they realize that their actions have consequences, 